Welcome back everybody. Today I'm actually going through my Guerlain collection for you. Uh, this isn't to show off or anything like that. In fact, it's rather embarrassing really when you think about it. But the reason I've decided to go through my Guerlain collection is because I have been asked many, many, many times over the last year and a half to do a fragrance collection video. And I think when I did my first declutter video last year was when the questions started coming in, please do a perfume collection video. And I was kind of hesitant to do that, A, because I knew I was getting rid of some things and there were some things I was gonna be adding to the collection, but also because, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not entirely proud of the fact that I have a couple hundred bottles of perfume. I also thought it would take a really long time. I also didn't know how I wanted to structure the video. And so it was just all a little bit hard. So I kept avoiding it. Uh, but again, the, more recently, the uh, perfume collection video requests have been coming in um, both in DMs or through email or through uh, just the comments on videos. So I'm doing it. So today I'm going through my Guerlain collection and I am quite surprised actually when I gathered them all together <laughs> how many there actually were. I think this is definitely the house I have the most bottles from with Serge maybe being the second biggest. But here we are, let's just dive in. I probably won't talk too much about them other than how much I like them maybe uh, because they, you know, otherwise this video will just be really, really long. First cab off the rank and this is going to be entirely random, just picking them at random. The first one is Eau de Cologne Imperial. This is a, I think this was a Chinese New Year special because of the bottle. It doesn't normally come in a red bottle. It's just a really beautiful cologne, very similar to say a 4 7 Eleven. Just really nice for a really hot day in the hottest days of summer. We get really hot, humid weather here. Longevity on this is not great, but I just, it's just so refreshing and nice. I really don't mind, you know, oh, if I'm going out for a walk or something, I might splash this on or spritz it on in, in the case of this one, because it is a spray bottle. And, you know, that'll just be, it'll last maybe for the walk and and then it'll burn off my skin really quickly, but I don't mind. It's, it's really lovely and refreshing and light and that's all you care about, that's what it's for. The next one is Apre Lunde, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. This is a really lovely, kind of old fashioned, watery, slightly powdery floral. It smells purple and I, I mean, I'm sure I'm swayed by the, the label because the label is obviously a mauvey kind of color, but it's got um, violet and iris and I think some carnation or something in there. It's just really lovely. There's some woody notes in there too, but they're really subtle. So it's still quite, it's very floral dominant. It's just really pretty, very light. Uh, it smells, it smells a little bit like it's from another era and I really enjoy it. It smells a little bit like it's from another era and I really enjoy it. And it has been discontinued, I believe, although I think you can still find it around. So definitely worth picking up if you like that kind of thing, but it's not going to be for everyone, this one. So definitely make sure you sort of check it out before you drop the money on it if you are worried about that. The next one is Insolence Eau de Toilette. I did have the EDP. In fact, I still have a 10 mil travel size of the EDP, uh, which came in a gift pack, I think, but I actually sold the EDP last year, I think, or earlier this year, uh, just because I loved it. I really, really loved it, but I just wasn't finding I was wearing it enough and the eau de toilette is far more wearable for me in the type of weather that we have in, in terms of um, being an all year round weather fragrance. The, the EDP was beautiful in the dead of winter when it was cold, but where I live, it's warm most of the year. So uh, it, it just wasn't suitable for it. So I felt like I was being choked when I wore it, even though I loved the scent. So. Uh, I have decided to stick with the Eau de Toilette, which is definitely lighter. 
very powdery with sweet. I think people talk about it having a sweet candied violet note in it. There's obviously lots of iris in here as well. Very pleasant. I like it a lot. The next one is Edel, which is a beautiful, another beautiful floral fragrance. So this one has freesia in it, I think. Um, there's rose as well. I definitely get a sort of a fresh, watery, pretty rose from this. Uh, there's lily of the valley and jasmine. So lots of, so white florals, just a mix of florals really, but very sort of airy and watery and sweet. There's, um, I think there's lychee in here as well. So it's kind of a little bit fruity, but not, I wouldn't, but I would definitely say it's more floral than fruity. So very pretty, very feminine. I, I, it's the perfect spring day scent, really. The next three are all samsaras. Uh, so this is the Eau de Toilette. So, so nice. I mean, I've said it many times before. I know that a lot of people are disappointed with the current formulation. I still really love it. I'm not going to complain. It still smells like samsara. It's just not as deep and the, the sandalwood isn't quite the same as it is in the more old, in the older bottles, but it's still very recognizably samsara and I love it. And I love wearing the EDT at bedtime um, and just around the house. It's, it's a very easy wearing fragrance, this one in the eau de toilette form. The Eau de Parfum form is less so. This is one of the most recent red bottles that they had before they switched over to the B bottles. And definitely it's a lot bigger than the Eau de Toilette, which you would expect. Um, the opening is very almost plasticky smelling. And I hope you're not getting that background noise, but Matt's listening to something very loud at the moment. Um, but it, yeah, the opening is kind of a bit plasticky. And I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of the opening, but that kind of only lasts a few moments and then it, it goes away. It starts to settle into the samsara that I know and love um, very quickly. So I, I still wear it quite happily. Although I don't wear the EDP as much at the moment because I don't know, I feel like I'm just gravitating towards the EDT a little bit more. And I feel like the EDP, I think, is such a big fragrance that it's something that I want to wear out and we aren't going out very much like most people in the world. Even though we're not under lockdown here, um, we still just aren't really going out very much. Our lives have very much changed since 2020 started. And then the third bottle is Samsara also. And then the third bottle is Samsara also, but it's vintage. So this one, I think I dated it to the 1980s. So soft, so beautiful. So I guess, yeah, I think the difference between, one of the major differences between the vintage Samsara and the modern Samsara, I mean, obviously that sandalwood um, is different. Uh, in, in the vintage Samsara, they still use synthetic sandalwood um, aroma chemicals, but they also had some real Mysore sandalwood in there. Whereas in the more recent formulations, there's no Mysore sandalwood. So, but I think the main difference between the vintage and the current formulations for me is that when I spray it on, as I say, with that EDP in the red bottle, the opening feels a little bit plasticky to me, whereas the older version doesn't seem so, as much so, if that makes any sense. It just seems a lot softer, but that could just be the age as well. It doesn't necessarily mean it's directly due to the sandalwood. The next one is an Aqua Allegoria and it's Herba Fresca. This is a really beautiful herbal, minty uh, fragrance, very refreshing, not sweet, and I, I just really like it. It's, it's quite different to a lot of other freshy fragrances that I have. The next one I hardly ever wear, but I refuse to get rid of it, mm. is um, La Petite Verbe Noir, um, the Black Perfecto. I don't wear it very much because there's not very many circumstances where I feel like I could wear this. It is so sweet and it's a uh, cherry mostly in here. So I think it's the only fragrance that I have that is cherry or cherry dominant 
Um, I did have the Eau de Toilette of La Petite Robe Noire um, at one point and I sold that because that also had a cherry note in it but it was just very sugary sweet. But this one isn't as sweet, I don't feel, and it has um, a leather accord in it as well, so it gives it a bit more depth. There's also some almond notes in there. It is still very sweet, um, undeniably very sweet, but I do actually love to wear this when I'm wearing a black leather jacket because I just feel like it's perfect for that. And that's probably the only time on a really cold day in winter wearing a black leather jacket that's the best time to be wearing this one. The next one I have is the Eau de Toilette of Le Bleu. Uh, this has sort of been getting a lot of airtime in the last six months or so. Um, this is a really beautiful, soft, almost um, medicinal kind of floral, uh, orange blossom scent. And oh, it's really strange because when I first spray it, I don't really get orange blossom, but a few seconds later, even just spraying it in the air, now all I can smell is orange blossom. And now it's kind of papery, but when I first opened, it was very kind of medicinal. It's really, really beautiful. I don't wear it enough, but I think I'm gonna wear it quite a bit this winter because I'm going to put it to the front of my cabinet. I think it's time, especially with the weather we're having at the moment, it's gonna be fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's Le Bleu. The next one is one that I felt that I needed to have in my collection, but I never wear it, and that is Mitsuko Eau de Toilette. For some reason in Australia, it seems to be really hard to get the EDP versions of Le Bleu and Mitsuko. Um, I'm not sure if they're just not being made now, but I have seen EDP versions online, but I just never seem to see them where we are. Now Mitsuko, I actually really do like, except on my skin, that ashy cigarette kind of vibe that it has. So what happens is that it actually smells like, this is gonna sound so gross, it smells really stale on my skin and it smells like an old stale ashtray. Not, I mean, I like cigarette smoke or cigarette notes in fragrances, but in this one, for some reason on my skin, it just, yeah, it goes really like stale cigarettes, like stale, <laughs> you know, when you come, if you're not a smoker and you come across a smoker and they're talking to you and they're breathing and you can smell the stale cigarettes on their breath, that's what it smells like on my skin. So I definitely do not want to smell like that, but I just cannot bring myself to get rid of it. I think um, this is just one that I want to have in my collection for reference and to see maybe if over time my perception of how this smells changes. So Mitsuko. The next one is one that I have talked about quite a bit and a fair bit recently as well and that is Mon Guerlain, the original EDP. This is nice. Lavender and vanilla. Um, I really enjoy the lavender opening on this, but some days it dries down to just smell like boiled fruit lollies to me, and it's just too sweet and sugary. But I do enjoy wearing it at night time. I enjoy wearing it around the house. I don't tend to wear it out very much. The next one is definitely one of my favorites, but it breaks my heart that it doesn't last very long on my skin. Um, well, it lasts a long time, but it, it, dry, it, it goes very much to a skin scent very, very quickly. Um, but so for that reason, I do like to spritz it on after a shower or something. And then I know that within, you know, maybe a, a couple of hours, it will have died down. So if I'm going out anywhere, it's perfect because then I can spray something over the top. Uh, I can still detect it on my skin for several hours. It's just that you really have to smell it. So this is Beza de Russi, and I did a whole review on this one. Be interesting to revisit that because that was fairly early on in my channel. So I'd be interested to know if my thoughts on it have remained the same since then. So maybe I will revisit it soon, uh, but it, uh, it's just beautiful. It, it is not a cheap 
perfume for something that pretty much becomes a skin scent within a couple of hours. But the enjoyment that I get out of it for that first couple of hours is worth it to me. So, but I know that is a complaint of, of, from most people that it's a beautiful scent, but it doesn't last very long. The next one I've also been on the fence about decluttering, and this is Terracotta by, of course it's gonna be by Guerlain Cherie, Terracotta. Uh, so this is a tropical vibe fragrance, very beachy. It's a uh, coconut and tiare flower and probably frangipani. It's just all those really beautiful tropical flowers. I think with this one, when I first started wearing this, I had decants and then it took me ages to, I think I went through about two or three decants of 10 mils and I, eventually I decided to buy a bottle. <laughs> that was when I was much more sensible about my perfume purchases. I would, you know, wear decants all the time and then I would take ages to decide to upgrade to a bottle and then, I don't know, last year just everything went out the window and I was just buying bottles left, right and centre like most people. Uh, but I, um, I don't know now. You know, it took me so long to get the bottle and now I've got the bottle and I'm sort of going, I'm not sure if I love it that much anymore. Maybe I've just had my time with it. The next one is Champs-Élysées Eau de Toilette. I have not actually tried the Eau de Parfum of this. So I'm curious to try it. Uh, but this is just beautiful. Really, really beautiful. It's creamy. It's mimosa, it's just beautiful florals. I, I don't even know what florals are in here. I know mimosa is one of them, um, but I just love this fragrance. It smells so elegant and put together and clean. Um, I, you, just, you can't go wrong. I wear this to bed a lot because I wanna smell clean when I go to bed. And I usually am clean when I go to bed because I have a shower right before I go to bed. But uh, I, just, you know, I just love how this makes me feel. I'm tempted to wear this during the day, but I've been sort of, I think I wore it on a daytime once, but because I always wear it at night, it sort of felt weird. <laughs> felt like I was getting ready for bed. Anyway, so I'm gonna start wearing it during the day just to see what happens. So the next few are from the arts and materials. I, I can't say it in the French way but the arts and materials line. And there's also, I also have one from the um, Elixir Chanel line, which I'll start with that one because that's the only one. It's the odd one out. So this is Gourmand Cocan. And I do really love the bottle. I actually wore this last night for the first time in ages. And it's so nice. It's probably, it's chocolate. It's a chocolatey scent, but it smells so good. You all know that I'm not a gourmand fan, but this stuff is so addictive. And I, I just feel so cozy when I wear it. I, 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 again, I'm not sure this is one that I have worn out anywhere. I think this is definitely a, I wanna be at home, with my cozy woolies on and I want to cozy up on the couch with a good book or something, that is this for me. Uh, but I have to say, when I sprayed this on last night, I suddenly did have a craving for dessert. <laughs> so it is just oh, absolutely beautiful. Can't go wrong. If you're a gourmand lover, you can't go wrong with this. I mean, I've tried other gourmands, obviously, and things like to me, I just feel like this is a really classy gourmand fragrance. It's still very sweet. So if you don't like sweet fragrances, it won't sit well for you. But I just find that compared to a lot of other gourmand fragrances today, which are usually also very loud, there's something in them that makes them very loud. Um, this is not like that. This is still very elegant, I think. So. Well done, Guerlain. You've made one of the few Gourmand fragrances that I actually like. So the next one is Angelique Noir. This is a beautiful vanilla fragrance. This was the first vanilla fragrance that I bought. Um, and I love it because it's 
got the angelica in there and it's very green so yeah it's just it's not it's not your normal vanilla but it is beautiful um, you do still definitely get the vanilla in there but there is just that greenness from the angelica flower I think um, and it's just can't go wrong it's a cult favorite for a reason you see this one around a lot on Instagram uh, yes the bane of my existence the hideous puffer atomizer but um, beautiful beautiful fragrance Tonka Imperial I'm so keen to get another bottle of this now that they've disposed of or eradicated these puffer atomizers from the line I'm so keen to go and buy another one just to have the normal atomizer because I'm so worried that if I try and take this off I'm going to just, just well it will destroy the bottle and then I have to transfer it anyway so I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens it is a lot of money to spend on a second bottle of perfume that I already have a full bottle of almost full bottle of so we'll see um, but you know I've talked about this quite a bit it's beautiful beautiful Tonka best Tonka fragrance in my collection I think the next one I'm surprised I've used as much of it as I have actually this is Spirit Juice Double, Double Vanille and again I'm surprised I've used as much of it as I have because it's not actually my favorite it's very boozy vanilla there was it I do have my moments where I really like it but for the most part I'm not a huge fan of it it's I definitely like the others more than I like this one and my battery is about to go dead so I'm going to change that if I feel like a boozy fragrance then this is the one I wear I don't really have many boozy fragrances because I'm not really a boozy note type of gal I prefer to drink my booze the next one is Rose Barbar and I think I've mentioned it before that this one was one that I didn't gel with at first and then Matt smelled it on my skin after I had sampled it in store one day and he loved it and so I pretty much bought the bottle because I knew that he loved it however now I really love it so I think it's just I had to get used to rose when I first tried it I didn't like it that much because I wasn't really into rose fragrances at the time and now I am so and then we have come to the last bottle so this is the ever the elusive iris ganache which cost me a pretty penny I might say somebody was selling it I think late last year or earlier this year I'm pretty sure it was late last year that I bought this and uh, it's the older bottle so older formulation I, I, did it get reformulated I, I don't know actually I don't really know that much about this but I just love this line of fragrances and so when I saw this come up I, I decided to press the buy button uh, somebody was selling it in one of the Facebook groups I did have a, an exchange with Claire from Smurfy Girly on this just to you know I guess get an idea I had smelled I know this gets compared a lot to the Maison Lancôme Iris Dragies or however you say it they are quite different but a lot of people compare them to each other because there might be some similarities I suppose or I guess they're both gourmand irises perhaps this is interesting though because this is one of those ones that definitely changes depending on whether you spray it or you dab it and actually I prefer to dab this one because for me when I spray it I get this really weird I can't remember the note I can't remember what it reminds me of but it's a very strange opening for me when I spray it but when I dab it on my skin it's really really nice so this is one of the few bottles that I prefer to dab rather than spray which is why I don't have the atomizer in it so I was just editing this video and realized that I had forgotten one of the most important fragrances from my Galan collection the iconic Shalimar and I actually have several flankers uh, from the Shalimar line so I thought I'll just quickly go through them now and tack this on to the end of the Galan video so I can't believe I forgot that so we'll start with the 
original Shalimar Eau de Parfum. I adore this fragrance. I know that it's difficult for a lot of people. And in fact, it's very interesting that I love this one so much as or as much as I do because I, I'm not a leather fan. And this does have leathery elements to it. And, but it also has this beautiful sort of dark, oily citrus opening, which I really enjoy. Um, and it's also got this beautiful powdery dry down, which is just breathtaking. And it's just so, it, it's not a, necessarily an easy one to wear, although this is now my second bottle of Shalimar. I really, really love it. Um, but I haven't actually worn it that much lately. So perhaps I do tend to wear the Eau de Parfum more in winter time, I have to admit, because it is quite hefty, but it's just, it's fantastic. If you haven't tried it, do. <laughs> but if you have tried it and you don't like it, then you're definitely not alone. And it did take me a while to learn to appreciate this one. And to be fair, I was probably wearing it before I was really ready to be wearing it. Um, I kind of trained myself. I think I just convinced myself that I wanted to wear this perfume because I loved, I loved the bottle and it's so iconic. I think when I started wearing this, I was probably too young to be wearing it, I think. And I suspect that if I were to go back to those times that actually the fragrance was wearing me more than me wearing the fragrance because it is very big, it is very mature, um, but I wore it anyway. <laughs> anyway, so that is Shalimar Eau de Parfum. The next, uh, next up is the Eau de Toilette. I just have a little baby bottle of this one. Um, I wear this more sort of I guess on warm, warmer days, it's a little bit more, it still has, it still smells like the Eau de Parfum to me, but it's just a bit lighter. It's not quite as dense and it's not quite as dark, even though it still has those sort of leathery elements to it. Um, it's still very much more kind of a powdery citrus. The next two are two that I'm not that overly familiar with. These have been recent acquisitions for me. Um, I picked up, a bottle of the Shalimar Cologne. And I haven't actually worn it that much yet, but this one was a new bottle that I picked up from Fragrance X, I think, last year. And this one is really quite lemony. If I smell it out of the bottle, yeah, I get much more brighter. It's a lot more lemony. Uh, there's definitely still that beautiful vanilla base in there, but I think the ambery notes and the labdanum are definitely toned down and the citrus, the, that lemon citrus is, is brought up. But it's not the dark sort of oily lemon that I get in here. Uh, this is much brighter. It's more like the lemon juice. And when you get that vanilla base coming through, it almost, it almost feels gourmand to me, but it's, it doesn't quite go there. The next one I think is one that's been discontinued. This is Eau de Chalamar. And this one's interesting because where I find the Chalamar cologne to be a lot more lemony, I find the Eau de Chalamar is citrusy, but it's almost more watery. And perhaps less, um, less vanilla sweetness in this than there is in the cologne. So, it's still got that beautiful citrusiness to it. Um, and there's that slight powderiness that comes through again. But I just feel like the citrus isn't quite as lemony and it feels more kind of watery. And the vanilla in the base is not quite as sweet uh, or, or gourmandish. Oh, the next one I bought purely because of the bottle and then just fell in love with it after the fact. This one is Shalimar Souffle d'Oranger. A lot of people don't like this one. Um, it, it was a limited edition anyway. I don't think you can get it anymore. But this is very neroli heavy. So uh, in fact, I get more neroli than I do orange blossom in this. It's quite green, it's quite sharp, but it does have that souffle uh, Shalimar base to it. In fact, this was the fragrance that really got me to appreciate the souffle line from the Shalimar collection because I had always just, 
The souffle line was so different to the original Shalimar. It does have the Shalimar base in it. it well, if you look at the note listing, it's still got the same notes as the base of the original Shalimar. But the fact that something might be present doesn't necessarily mean it's present in a concentration that you can easily detect it. And to me, the souffle line did not smell related to the original Shalimar. However, this is related to the souffle line and I really, really love this fragrance. It gets quite soapy in the dry down. And I mean, I just love that old school, you know, orange blossom, neroli, soapy smell that used to be used in a lot of soaps. And um, to me, it just smells very classic and it very beautiful and it lasts really well. So I enjoy this one. Next up is my, possibly my second favorite from the Shalimar Souffle line. And this is Souffle Intense. I really love this for the benzoin. And I think this fragrance is what really put benzoin on the radar for me as a note that I really quite enjoy. Again, I know that a lot of people don't really like benzoin that much, but I am really, loving this and I particularly love it in the winter time. It's just the best fragrance for a cozy winter evening. And whilst there are probably a few from this Shalimar collection that I probably could offload if I really, really wanted to declutter them uh, and not feel bad, but I, I think I'd always want this one to stay in my collection. I also did um, last year pick up a bottle of the Souffle de Parfum. I've got the big bottle of this because that's all I could get. This uh, is very similar to the Intense, um, but again, probably more citrusy than the Intense version. And there's something, hmm, actually that does smell really good. Uh, but there is just something that's a little bit sharper in this one compared to the Intense. I feel the Intense is a lot deeper. The name suits it very well. Uh, and it's a lot more rounded and softer compared to this one. But this one is still very beautiful. Um, it's a little bit more lighter wearing than this one. So this one I would probably gravitate towards more in the evening. This one I could wear during the daytime quite happily. And then last but not least is um, my, <laughs> in a way, my pride and joy of this collection. It was so hard to get this bottle. I waited for it for ages to come up. Uh, but this is a bottle of Initial. A Shalimar initial. This one uh, I think was marketed to a younger segment of the market so possibly I should have been wearing this when I was originally wearing this but this was yeah this was designed for the younger lady who you know wasn't quite ready for the for the heftiness of the original Shalimar. So this one is more iris dominant and I have to admit when I first got this I didn't love it because I had already sort of gotten used to the original Shalimar and fell in love with that. But this one does have that sort of um, almost a waxy iris smell to it. And um, interestingly, it feels a lot less sweet than the original Shalimar to me. So even though I'm not a huge sweet fragrance fan, I thought that that was interesting because I, because this was marketed to younger women, I expected in my mind, I guess I just assumed that it would be sweeter um, and more lighter, but it's actually very, very iris heavy. And again, it's very quite, it's quite waxy, quite dense, very powdery and uh, not as sweet as I expected it to be. So in fact, it's really not that sweet at all. Uh, when I first spray it on, I can't remember how it dries down. I haven't worn it for ages. So I'm guess I'm wearing this now today. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that is um, Shalimar Initial. So that was the Shalimar segment to this video and we can get back to the original footage now. So that's it. That's my Guerlain collection. I am a little bit surprised that I have 21 bottles of Guerlain perfumes. Don't know how that happened. It just did. 
you know, it's so weird because when they're sitting on the shelf, it doesn't look like that many. But when I have to pull them out, put them on a table and talk about them, suddenly I realize there's actually quite a lot. But I do really love most of these. I mean, I wear all of them except for the Mitsuko and probably not so much the Terracotta uh, at the moment. But apart from those two, I do wear all of them. So I enjoy them. I, I don't see myself necessarily adding any more Guerlain's to my collection, although there may be one or two of the arts and materials that I still really want to get, but I'm kind of resisting that. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed fragrance voyeurism. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.